Hey y'all, I'm Ray, and I'm starting a new channel to talk about surrogacy and really to just vlog about my journey with surrogacy. Um, this is my first video, so welcome. And in this video, I'm just gonna talk about why I chose to be a surrogate um, and a little bit about the type of surrogacy that I'm doing. So um, first things first, I'm a mom of two kids and I'm a non-binary person. I use they, them pronouns. And I um, have been thinking about surrogacy. Let's see, I was 19, 20 years old. Um, so it's been like 12 years that I've been thinking about it, kind of holding it as a something in my heart that I feel is meaningful, something that I really wanted to do. I think that one of the most sacred um, endeavors that a person with, you know, reproductive parts that can, you know, have a child, someone with a womb, um, can do is bring life into the world. So, you know, having children is sometimes a controversial thing, um, depending on who you talk to, with our you know, overpopulation of the planet. There are people who think that we really shouldn't be having too many kids, and I kind of agree. Um, and at the same time, it's, you know, part of being human and being here, and part of the cycle of life is birth and death. So, um, you know, and I, I do feel that a lot of parents have kids for the wrong reasons. Um, a lot of parents have kids, you know, to satisfy their own ego, to, you know, fix something that happened in their childhood, um, to heal their own pain, to live vicariously through their child. And so I think that conscious parenting is so important and just like knowing why we had kids. Um, I definitely didn't know you know, when I started having kids, I wasn't super aware of these dynamics. And so I kind of just had kids because I thought that I was supposed to. Um, it felt right to me. I had always wanted to be a mom my whole life. I had been taking care of kids since my brother was born when I was 10. So to me, like children were just always going to be part of my life. And it seemed like the next logical step you know, when you get married, um, after marriage comes the baby carriage, like that's sort of, um, sort of the line of thinking that most people are on. And I'm not in that mindset anymore, but at the time that I had kids, that I started having kids, I really was. Um, I was on that, you know, relationship escalator track of like, okay, we got married, now we're gonna have kids. So after I had kids, then I started thinking like, do I want more? Um, and I thought, you know, I, I would like to maybe foster or adopt a child, but if I was gonna have another child, I, I would like it to be for someone else, you know, something that I'm giving um, to a family who has been longing to have a child. You know, I have two of my own, um, you know, that are biologically related to me and that were conceived and birthed naturally. So I just thought what a, what a gift that I could give to someone who really needed it. And I have friends, as most of us do, with infertility problems, with um, having their own children and their own biological children, I should say. So I just kind of had this place in my heart where I wanted to help. And specifically, I've always really wanted to have a baby for a gay couple. Um, so yeah, I just had this kind of desire in my heart to do something, to be of service, and I enjoy being pregnant. There are not a lot of female-bodied people who really enjoy that, um, and I do. <laughs> I feel good. Um, I don't have migraines. I just all of my, both of my pregnancies were really great. I didn't have a whole lot of morning sickness. There was like a little bit with each one, but it was totally otherwise like a wonderful experience. So 
I thought, you know, there's not a lot of people who can say that. So this is really, really a gift that I could, I could bring to someone's life is um, the ability to have a, a child who's biologically related to you. So I started thinking about it um, really seriously a, a year and a half ago and I started doing research and just learning all about gestational carriers and um, started researching agencies. I was gonna go through agency because I just thought, well, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't wanna, um, you know, get it, get into something that I don't know what I'm doing. It just feel, felt kind of irresponsible. So when I was researching, I found that the problem with gestational carriers for me was of being a gestational carrier. Sorry, it's not a problem with, with them. It's, it was a issue that I ran into myself where I thought, I don't want to um, have to take all the hormone injections that they have to take, which is like IVF treatment. So basically, if you're a gestational carrier, the embryo is created from the sperm and the egg of the mother and father or of a donor, for example, if it's the same sex couple. And so like, I would just be like the carrier and I wouldn't be biologically related to the child. And um, because of the whole process and because they want the embryo to survive and they want to give it like the maximum possible viability, um, they have the surrogate go through IVF treatments where they have like hormone injections and things like that. And I just, I don't know, I've had some like health issues with like autoimmune related stuff and I've never been on birth control. I didn't want to alter my body in like a way that wasn't necessary. So I started looking into other, other options and I, you know, was familiar with the turkey baster method as a lot of people um, referred to it. And I thought, you know, don't people still do that? <laughs> like just the old fashioned natural way um, we wouldn't have to pay for an egg donor because I have perfectly viable eggs. And I had actually thought about donating my eggs too, but that hadn't worked out. So I was like, you know, I could donate my egg and then whoever is the intended father, the intended parent would, would basically just inject their sperm and then we would make a baby. And that just seemed like a really simple, like easy way to do it. Only problem is that agencies don't do that. Um, I couldn't find any agencies that um, work with traditional surrogates. So it meant that I was gonna have to be on my own. I started doing research and then I joined a Facebook group that was for traditional surrogacy. And I just posted my bio up there, just kind of said, hey, this is what I am looking to do. I'm a mom and I wanna be a surrogate. And I got some responses on there. I got some questions about you know, would I be interested in working with these families? And I looked at all of them and really was not really feeling connected to most of them. But there was one person named Air that I really clicked with and I thought, I really like this guy. He's a foster dad and, you know, he loves kids and he's been a nanny for years. So, and for me, like, if I'm um, having a child that's biologically related to me, it's really important that I'm, that the child is going to be raised in a home that is at least up to par with what I would do in my own home. Obviously everybody is different. Every parent is different, but there's a certain standard of parenting. Obviously I wouldn't want the child to go to a family where they would use spanking as discipline or where they would, um, indoctrinate the child into a specific religion. Like there are certain things that I was thinking about as far as the well-being of the child, you know, what is best for this child. It's actually not easy to find someone that I can honestly say would, um, would it would be in the best interest of the child for this person to raise them. Um, because, I mean, I have a master's degree in early childhood education and I've been a daycare provider and a nanny for de a decade or more. So like, I just, it's a high standard <laughs> that I have um, that not every parent can meet, you know? Like not every parent has the experience that I have. And so it would be hard for me to honestly say it's in the best, the interest, the best interest of this child that I hand them over to you for you to raise them. 
Um, yeah, so with Air, it was true. And I had some hard conversations with him when I was getting to know him, some sort of like, uh, maybe controversial conversations about like what they thought would be best um, in terms of child raising and like family life. And like, we really, even the things that we sort of saw differently, we were able to find a kind of a common ground. We have a lot in common. Um, we both have a deep respect for children and we see them as whole human beings, um, not like less than adults. And we understand the developmental needs of children. And Air has a lot of training because of what he's doing in the, with foster kids. You know, he has a lot of training in working with different like learning disabilities and neurodivergence and trauma and all of that. So, you know, and I thought that the reasons why Air wanted to have a baby were really, really great. Um, you know, he really has a passion for kids and he wants to build a family. He wants to build a very large extended family that would include me and my kids and all the people that he's helped. He actually helps uh, other couples um, to start their families by donating his sperm. So, you know, there's like a larger vision there. And he also really wanted to have a, a child that was biologically related to him and someone that he could raise from the very beginning. He could make all the choices um, that he thought would be in the best interest of the child. Because a lot of times in the foster system, you end up, um, you know, raising kids that unfortunately the best choices were not made for them and so they have trauma and they have health issues and they have lots of things going on that um, you know he's perfectly willing and capable of taking on he just really wanted to have the opportunity of, of raising a child from the beginning um, you know from conception so I thought that was really beautiful and we just see eye to eye on so many things so it was really just a really good match for us. And um, I'm really excited to start. So we actually signed our contract yesterday. Um, there was a lot of reading over it and the contract is really just us putting our personal, um, kind of what we really feel passionate about, like making sure that we do. Um, and so it's a very personal agreement between the two of us that it probably wouldn't look the same for any, um, any surrogate and IP. We changed a lot. We took, we just kind of copied and pasted one traditional surrogacy agreement and we tweaked a lot of things, um, took out chunks and like added things in um, and really just like took a lot of time. I think it took us a month and a half to read through it and really like think about everything and then finally sign it. So I'm really excited to be starting this journey and um, I hope anyone who has comments or questions, please leave them below. Um, there's gonna be more videos. There's so many topics that I could cover with this. There's so many like little details that go into being a surrogate. And I'm just gonna document the journey um, from beginning to birth. And one day these videos will be a beautiful gift for the child who um, will come into the world from this lovely process. So thanks for joining me everyone. Have a great day.